guys and welcome to Nickert. In today's video, we're going to be taking a break from my Among Us videos. Um, that kind of took off and I was not expecting to be making so many of those, but I've been getting a lot of requests for it and people are kind of going crazy about Among Us. So I'm going to be making a ton more accessory videos for that, but I wanted to do something a little bit more seasonal today. Not that Among Us isn't seasonal, but you know what I'm saying, a little bit different. I'm, I'm switching it up a little bit. I wanted to do this really cute little pumpkin design. I've seen a bunch of different versions of the same kind of rough idea on Pinterest. I've seen a couple different versions, but this is the kind that I decided to do myself and make my own little cute version. I also made a really cute version that has a little leaf. I kind of prefer it without the little leaf if I'm gonna put it in the sun or something, but I wanted to give people the option to have a leaf and this same leaf is the same one that I'm going to be doing for the leaf hat for my Among Us uh, video as well so if you are waiting for that and you want to get a little bit of a sneak peek this is the leaf that I'm going to be duplicating two of and making a nice little stem to make a little hat that you can put on top of your little Among Us dude so stay tuned for that next week as well I'm also going to be doing egg a uh, little egg hat as well and the little dead body for the among us anyway enough about among us let's go ahead and get going on this pumpkin pattern for this pattern i'm using some pretty heathered yarn i'm using a yarn called studio by nicole i know that this is not in i'm not sure if it actually is being worked or not i know that it was a yarn that was at ac moore and then ac moore was bought out by michael so i don't know if michael's technically owned studio by nicole now unsure about all that business, but basically all you're going to need is some worsted weight yarn. I'm just using what I have, and this is a stash that I have. I'm going to be using this for a beautiful granny square blanket that I'm working on. It's gorgeous. Go ahead and check my Instagram out for that if you're interested in seeing granny squares. I am all about those this season. Cuddling up with some green tea and making a good granny square. Honestly, it's where it's at. So all you need is some worsted weight yarn. I'm using this pretty heathered yarn. As I said, you're going to need a 3.25 or D3 crochet hook that is 3.25 millimeter. I'm using a beautiful Furls crochet hook. I have an affiliate link with them. I love that. I've got links and coupon codes down below if you're interested in that. I love how this works because I am more of an inline versus a tapered crochet hook kind of gal. I'm going to be doing a video where I explain the difference between the crochet hooks as well, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm also going to be using some darning needles and some fluff. Believe it or not, this actually was covered and filled with yarn mill ends. It makes a bit sturdier of a pumpkin, so I would definitely suggest stuffing it with yarn mill ends instead of your stuffing if you have a bunch of like little ends from projects that you're not doing anything with they worked out really well i haven't made a stem for him yet but this is just what the base of the pattern looks like before i add the stem or the leaves all right so let's get started okay so for the top of this pattern i'm going to be basically duplicating my staggered chart increase up to 36 stitches. If you're confused by what I'm saying, I have a link down below for my staggered versus stacked increase. I am staggering my increases up to 36 and I've got a little description thing for that down below. Next, after I get up to 36 stitches, so I go from 6 to 12 to 18 to 24 to 30 to 36, I'm going to be going seven rounds around after that just single crocheting around that basically is just getting you the height that you want your pumpkin so if you want your pumpkin to be a little bit taller go around a couple more times you can totally do that if you want to have a fatter pumpkin increase more and go around more the same principles are going to be basically the same when you're working on your projects and i can also make a larger pumpkin if anybody's interested in that as a tutorial in the future this is just a really pretty rust color again studio by nicole is what i'm working with so if you have that it's pretty cool. I'm going to increase all the way to 36. I already have here. And now I'm going to just single crochet around seven times. And I'll be right back as soon as that's done. And then I'll show you how I do my decreases. And then I'll show you how I split that off into the pumpkin. Be right back. All right, so this is essentially what I mean by going around seven times. You've added to your length. We have two, four, six, and seven. I don't know why I counted by evens there, but I did. So now we're going to do our decreases and we're gonna do our decreases, basically the inverse of our increases. So I'm staggering my decreases as well. And when I stagger them, I'm going to, actually first I'm gonna take my tail 
and bring it up over here just to show where I am. I know I've made seven rows, so I don't need that there anymore. I'm gonna pull my tail over here, keep track of where I am. And before, on our last increase round, we single crocheted two, increase, single crochet two. So we're gonna do the inverse of that where we single crochet two, one, two, and we decrease instead of increase. And the way that I decrease is I'm gonna put my hook into my first stitch, put my hook into, well technically it's my third stitch, put my hook into my fourth stitch. So the next two stitches after my single crochet two, and then I'm going to single crochet through both of those like normal. And I'm gonna do that again. So single crochet two, one, two. There should be four stitches between each decrease, essentially. So we're just kind of spreading it out. So single crochet one, two, decrease. Three, four. So let's go again, single crochet one and two. Decrease by putting two stitches together single crochet three and four single crochet one two decrease three four single crochet one what was that one? Single crochet one, two, decrease. Nope, not going to that one. Three, four. Single crochet one, two, decrease. three, four, and this should be our last repetition. Single crochet one, two, decrease, three, and the fourth stitch is right above where our tail was, so that was perfect. I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna move it up so that I can know where my next row starts. And now we're going to, again, do the inverse. So we're gonna go to the row before our last decrease. So the second before last. And I'm going to single crochet three. One, two, three. And decrease. This offsets your decreases and makes them far less visible. These are already invisible decreases as it is, but I find that even staggering my stitches when I'm decreasing, it just looks overall better. So one, two, three, four, and five go together like so. And we're gonna do that the entire way around. Two, three, four, five together, one, two, three, four, five together, one, two, three, four and five together, one. This is our last decrease round, two, three, four and five together. I'm gonna move my tail over again. And now we're going to decrease. So we went from 36 down to 30, and that 30 just went down to 24. We should have 24 stitches on our work. And now we're gonna go from 24 down to 18 stitches. 
And the way that I do that is we're going to stagger our stitches again. So instead of single crocheting two and decreasing, we're going to single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one the entire way around. So this is going to take us from 24 down to 18. So single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, 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 and this should be our last decrease of this round, so single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one. You'll also notice that the yarn tends to kind of migrate this way each time. That's okay. It's because of how we decrease and how it's all working and around and it spirals basically. So I'm going to take my tail and move it along again. And now I have just as much of a hole in here that I need to stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you my yarn mill glass jar that I keep all my yarn mill ends in. I personally have been looking and using a lot of this lately and filling it a lot of these pumpkins with it and it helps save on polyfill. I also like how much firmer. So this one is a bit more plushy and you can see how it kind of squishes in more. This one does not do that. It is much firmer when I use my yarn tail ends. So these are all tail ends from when I've been crocheting my granny square blanket or anything like that. So I'm just going to kind of make a mess and dump a bunch of this out. So I have a bunch of these tails and what I'm going to do before I finish off my decreasing is I'm going to take this big honkin center and I'm going to start putting them inside of the hole here. And I'm going to see if I can get this to look the way that I want it to look. Sometimes you have to kind of cut up the tails in order to make it act like polyfill, but I'm just going to be working it. And what I do that's a little bit different, I'm going to be working it so that there's a bit more of a hole in the center of your pumpkin. That's going to make it easier for when you're pulling in your tails later. I do not stuff it so full like I do my amigurumi. I kind of just stuff it with as much as I can. I'm going to try to keep my tail as far out of this as I can. That way I don't mix them up. And I'm going to just kind of keep it so that I'm rounding off my sides, but not putting too much towards the center. I'm just kind of pushing it outward as much as I can, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. This is going to be kept side here. There we go. That needs to be there. And just try to make it so that it's not bumpy or lumpy on the outside. Sometimes I have to add some polyfill just to give it a little bit more fluff, but this one was actually done all with yarn tails. And this is what I like to do to recycle my yarn tails. I end up stuffing it into a bunch of my projects. I make it work. I don't think I'm going to need to use all of them. I just need to kind of cup my sides and push it going outward making it a little less lumpy and honestly it doesn't super matter if it's that lumpy because well pumpkins are kind of lumpy so it's not the biggest deal if you can't get it to be perfectly smooth so i'm going to move him in there i just don't want too much of a thickness down the center otherwise you're gonna have a harder time getting your darning needle back and forth i just want it to be round on my sides and honestly, this is pretty good. I'm probably going to use the rest of this, but I'm going to close it up one more round. We are going to go from the 18 stitches, and we're going to go down to the 12 stitches that I want it to be. So now, the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one, and we're going to decrease the entire way around. So single crochet one, go through these two stitches, and decrease single crochet one and decrease one decrease one decrease pull my tail a little bit more 
one decrease I believe I have one more yes one and decrease so I have 12 stitches left and the only thing I have after this is to do one more round of just decreases the entire way around. I'm going to get down from 12 down to 6 and I'll show you how I close off. However, I am going to take my tail and since I know I only need to decrease 6 more times, I'm going to take my tail and pull that through and kind of make it act like it's stuffing and shove that back inside. That way I'm not wasting any of my tails at all. And then you can see that it's a little bit more hollow on the sides here. So I'm going to take some of my tails and kind of just finish it off. I think we're almost done. I'm also still making sure that the center is not stuffed too, too much. There can be a little bit of stuffing. Like you want to just a tiny bit of stuffing on the very tip, but generally you want to be able to stick your finger in there and have it be just a width of your finger apart. So I'm going to take this and we're going to put that kind of there and let it be finished off. And we're going to now just kind of motion it around a little bit. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to decrease the last 12 stitches every single stitch so we're decreasing six times so one decrease two decrease three decrease I'm not splitting our yarn putting our tail back in four five and six all right so that was our last decrease you're gonna look at this and say hey you're crazy why is there still a hole in our work i know i say that every time and i'm not gonna ever not say that so um what we're gonna do basically is we're going to take our tail and here's where things get a little funky Let's see if I can readjust things so that it's a bit more obvious. It's a bit better. Okay, so it's a little bit further out now. What I'm going to do, and it's not going to be super obvious, is I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to take my yarn, and I'm going to cut a tail that is obscenely long. If you think you have a long enough tail, you don't. You're probably going to need a tail that's about three feet long. I'm not even exaggerating. I would rather leave too much of a tail and just reinforce my stripes here than not leave a long enough tail. It's a pain in the butt, but it's what you need in order to do this all in one foul swoop, and now you don't have to deal with things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave an obscenely long tail. See this little pile here? Yeah, I'm talking about a really long tail. So what I'm gonna do here now though, is I'm gonna take my loop, I'm gonna pull that tail, I'm gonna try really hard not to get this tangled, get that yarn out of the way, and so we're gonna pull that all the way through like so. All right, so now we're gonna take our darning needle. We're gonna find wherever the heck our tail just went. I think I may have even just left a little bit too long of a tail, but I'd rather leave too long of a tail than too short of a tail. I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to start working my darning needle from the back and into the front of every single stitch. So I'm going to pull that through. One. And do that again. On the next stitch. Two. Three. Pull that through. Do that again. We're going through every single one of these stitches. That way we can do all of this. It will only need this yarn that's left. Pull that. You don't want to pull it tight quite yet, not until you get to the end, too, because then you might mess up and it's harder to fix things when you start pulling on your tail. And this is our last stitch, so I'm going to go through the top and into the bottom and just pull on it. So now I'm gonna take this tail, and now that you've gone through every single one of those stitches, we're gonna pull it tight, and it will close up. And here is where things get fun. So what I do next, and I'm gonna to try to show it the best I can, is we're gonna take our tail, and I'm actually gonna make it so that this is a bit more even. There we go. So 
So our obscenely long tail and our darning needle. We have an obscenely long tail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my darning needle and go through the center of my bottom. And we're going to stick that up through and we're going to try to get that centered. It might take a couple of tries through the center of our original six single crochet right there. That nice little hole right there. We're going to pull that all the way through and we're going to pull it snug. Not so snug that you're going to snap your yarn, but you do want a good amount of tension on here. I have snapped my yarn doing this and it will ruin it. So now we have to work with this string. And what I end up doing is I'm going to take my yarn, I'm going to line it up like so, and I'm going to kind of hold it while I take my darning needle and go back to my bottom and feed it back up through the top loop. I kind of hold it in place while also trying to fish my needle through the middle of our original six stitches. We're gonna do that, and that's essentially how we create our nice loop here. And what I do is I'm gonna pull that snug so that it kinda pulls on the sides. We're gonna pull it tight, snug, and the way that I make this evenly spaced is you're essentially gonna do that and split it into six quadrants. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're gonna do that one, two, three, four, five, six times. And so what I like to do is I like to then take it and go the other way and split it in half. That way it's nice and even. So we're going to go across like so and make sure that our work is even, going straight across. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna hold that thread right there. I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm gonna go back up through while holding the thread. I'm gonna hold the thread like this now. Well, now that I got the darning needle going through the bottom. And I'm gonna try to find my way back up through the center. There we are. And so now we're gonna pull on this gently, gently. And I'm gonna make sure that this is centered with the other side that I want it centered with. And now I'm gonna pull it tight. So now we have it kind of split in half as you can see, it's kind of pulling on both sides. And now we just need to go like this, and we need to go again like that on each side. So I'm going to go like so, kind of split it into a third, take my darning needle, flip it, hold it where I want it on this side, take my darning needle, go through the center hole again. It gets easier the more you do it because you end up kind of with a spot that's, I don't know, pre-designated. So I'm gonna pull that through, and I am pretty happy with how that's lined up, actually. So now I'm gonna pull that tight, and I'm gonna go and split it the other way now, as evenly as I can. Hold my yarn there, go through the bottom, while still holding it all in place, figure out where my top is. Like so, that's not quite actually it. I need to find the hole that is the center. There we go. Sometimes you gotta re-angle, it's okay. It happens to the best of us. So now I'm gonna pull that tight and we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Make a nice third there, hold our tail, try to flip it while also still holding the tail, figure out if I can get this to go through the center. There we go, pull our tail, and tighten it, snug tight. And now we have one last quadrant to make. There we go. And you can always squish it into the shape that you want as well. So now we have one more quadrant. We're going to hold it there. Go through the center. Oh, that was really easy. It went right through. And do that. And now the reason why this tail is so long, you're going to be like, oh, that was easy. I don't need to do any more. I did not need that long of a tail. I like to reinforce this because if one of these snaps, you're done. It's done. It's not like a fun little project anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each of those lines. I'm such a perfectionist and I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to do this. Seriously, if you want to make it with a shorter tail, you can. But I prefer going over each of the lines and just kind of reinforcing each of the pieces. So I'm going to go again and I go across all six of them. So this is two. Let's 
going through the center. Two, that's where it was. I'm gonna go to the right. Three. I'm going a little faster now since we know what we're doing now and we have a designed template to do it through. Three, go to the right. Four, go through the center. Four, and it also kind of like reinforces it and makes it a bit more prominent when I do it this way too. Five. And six. You can go again if you want to. I'm not going to. I think going around just those times is perfect for me. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I did not need to make this long of a tail, obviously. So I'm going to take my tail and I'm just going to feed it through the side of my pumpkin. Push it through like so. I'm then going to take wherever that came out of. I want to go across just to reinforce that a little bit more. The more angles you can re-angle it, the, the better and further away it is and the more likely it is to actually stay in place, in my opinion anyway. So now we're going to take this. I know I made too long of a tail and it's wasteful of yarn, but again, I use yarn tails as stuffing, so I get to recycle them all the time. I actually just emptied out my entire glass container and now I get to re- do all of the tails and hit my camera. There we go. All right. So that is how you do the pumpkin base. And next up, we're gonna work on the stem. Okay, so next up for the stem, it's super easy. We're also gonna be working in the round in order to do this little brown stem. I'm again using a Stitch Studio by Nicole in a color called Earth Tones. They come in these giant skeins, so it's kind of just sitting off camera. Excuse me, it's upside down, so it's kind of just sitting off camera. I'm going to put it over there. I've been doing a lot of granny square blanket stuff with it, so there's that. We're going to, basically, I'm going to put a little pattern up here, just like I did for the pumpkin itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice, good six-inch tail, like so. We're then going to make our magic ring, just like we did for our base of our amigurumi. And I'm going to put all that over there so it's a little bit more obvious what I'm doing. All right. Just re-angled re the camera. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our magic ring. We're going to chain one and two and we're gonna go back inside our first chain and we're going to place four single crochet on the inside of that chain. So one, two, oh, I split my yarn, two, there we go three, and four. So now for row two, we are going to increase every single one of those stitches while working in the round. We're gonna go from four up to eight stitches. We're gonna go inside that first stitch and increase it. One, go back inside that same stitch. Two, go into the next stitch and increase. Three, and same stitch, fourth stitch. The third stitch is now, oh, splitting the yarn. It's because it's old. Five, and go again, six. And in our final stitch, we're gonna go seven and eight. Now, I like making this stem look a bit more square on top and I achieve this by doing something called back loop only. It's essentially how with this work I've been going through the front loops only for all of my amigurumi. We're going to go through this V into the back portion of that V only which creates this little raised edge essentially. We're going to do that for all eight stitches and just single crochet around. So one going through the back loop only, two Going through the back loop only, three, back loop, four. We're gonna kinda re-angle it, make sure that this is popping outward and not going inward on itself like it wants to. Five, six, seven, eight, 
And so now we have this nice raised part here. And what we're going to do, we'll put that there actually. What we're going to do is now for round four, we're just going to single crochet around and I'm going to go through the front loop only again. So we're going to go through this front loop, the very first one closest to your hook, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now we're going to go into the first loop of our round five. We're not working into it. If you want to make your stem longer, you could go around again, but I'm not doing that. So I'm going to just slip stitch into that and create a nice, decently long tail for sewing and pull that through. And we're going to sew that onto the top of our pumpkin. I'm going to take my tail here. And what I like to do is I actually like to take our original tail and I like to put it onto my darning needle and I like to just stick it through the center of our pumpkin and that kind of centers this and keeps it in place while we sew it so that is all the way through just fed through the bottom of this pumpkin and i like to just center my stem however i would like it, it makes a nice sturdy pumpkin i like to line up my tail with one of the grooves because i find that makes it hide where the original part of it is if that makes sense so what i like to do is i like to go line up like so and I'm gonna take it and go underneath it underneath that groove that way it kind of reinforces it and then I'm gonna go through the top into the bottom of our loop here and I'm gonna do that the entire way around essentially and it's a little trickier to sew things when you've got tails in instead of polyfill it feels a little less neat and it feels like you're breaking into yarn that way but it's okay, it just feels funny. I don't know, I think it feels funny. Like so, and I'm tugging my tail as I go along and it helps hide it a little bit more, in my opinion. I like to go under and over. And next up, we're gonna work on the leaf. It's super duper easy, I promise. And we're gonna go like so, tug our tail every couple of rounds, and keep going. I'm gonna go underneath this actually. I'm just snugging it as I I know snugging is not a word, but I'm making it one. Dang it. Eee. All right, we're getting down to the last couple of stitches, and I'm gonna tug on it a little bit. Make it snug, tug, you know, both of those things. There we go. I hate sewing. It's my least, that and stuffing. I like the crocheting part of amigurumi. I do not like the shaping it and making it into its final projects because it's just stressful. I don't know. I think it's stressful. Wait, I went through that loop. I want to go through the final one, which is always a little bit difficult. So that's the final one. And now that I've gone through there, I'm going to go through. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't pull yarn out. There we go. I'm gonna pull that through and tug it. I'm gonna kind of shape him, make sure he's how I want him to look. That is good, I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to take my original circle thing here, the original tail basically that I put through the center. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it through a side basically, just to get a little bit further out so that it's not as tempted to try to wiggle its way any other which way. We're gonna pull that and these tails are gonna go in with my yarn tail ends. P push on the side, make it so that the tail is a little bit more hidden. Ooh, don't cut the pumpkin, that'd be very bad. 
All right, so next up, we're gonna work on how to make this really cute little leaf. Okay, so for the leaf, I'm gonna be using, again, Earth Tones, uh, Studio by Nicole. I have a bunch in green, and I'm going to make a decently long tail, again, for sewing, and I'm gonna make a magic ring, and instead of doing my normal just chain two magic ring, I'm just going to create my slip knot, and I'm going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, whoop, tug, and six. We're going to join our last chain with our first chain by putting our hook inside of our very first chain and slip stitching through both of them, essentially. And what I do next is I'm going to chain two. This kind of acts as our first double crochet, and we're going to put five double crochets on either side of our leaf. So essentially, when I did my chain two here, all I need to do now is to do four double crochet into my little loop circle here. So this is one, two, There we go, two, three, it wants to split so badly, there we go, I fixed it, and four. So essentially that chain acts as a double crochet, one, two, three, four, we have five kind of double crochet on this side of the leaf if that makes sense. Next up, we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. I'm gonna try to keep this as tight as I can because if you don't keep your last chain tight, it creates a really warbly looking like point on your little leaf. Essentially, we're creating this little point right here on the leaf. And I'm going to just slip stitch and take our work here we're going to go back inside our very first chain that we made and we're going to slip stitch our third into our very first here which creates this kind of angle now we're going to five double crochet back inside of our main circle so go back inside and go one to create our other side two three, four, and five. And I'm going to just slip stitch back into that same circle, slip stitch into it, and cut a nice good six inch long tail for sewing. I'm going to put that on its side there. I'm going to put that to the side there, and I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to take my hook, and pull my yarn all the way through, and that basically makes a nice hole there. And we're going to actually tug on our original tail, kind of closing up that circle. I don't like the circle and the, the being all the way open and showing this huge uh, just circle. Not into it. So I'm going to take my tail and we're going to essentially just kind of sew it onto our work here. You can go through a couple stitches. I'm lazy, honestly, and I just kind of work my tails through the center of my piece here. And then I will hot glue with a hot glue gun very gently right there if I want it to stay. Like I really want it there, but I don't know if I'm fully in love with this leaf or not. So I'm going to just kind of pull it through the center there center it however I would like it on the side and figure out if I'm in love with the leaf between now and later. I'm going to take this one and go through the center of the side here and go through. I will say that when you use tails as stuffing it's much harder to stick your darning needle through it. It's a lot tougher and I don't know if I like that. There we go. That way it'll stay stuck. And you can also take your 
green tails and go through another angle too to get it further away from the start so it's less likely to fall apart. So I'm going to do that and just make it so that it's more likely to stay where I want it to stay. And I'm probably going to take some hot glue and stick it um, on the other side of the leaf. Everything is squeaky on the table. Hmm. And I'm going to just kind of tug it, make sure it's as snug as I want it to be. And I'm going to cut my tails out and add it to the yarn tail bin. Make sure it's squished in so you can't see it. I am happy with that. And that is pretty much all there is to this pattern. Again, if you need it, there is a printable PDF for you over on uh, Ravelry. It will also be available on Lovecrafts a day from now. It takes a minute for that to load and transfer over, so sorry about that. Um, basically, it's going to be a free pattern for the first week, just like I do for all of my patterns. It will be $3 after that, so go ahead and go over there and get that free PDF if you are in the first week of viewing this. Um, subscribe and be in the know when we post new videos because usually we put a free pattern along with every single one of our videos, so stay tuned for that. If you are interested in supporting the channel and me bouncing my camera, uh, we have a Patreon. It's actually pretty popular over there and there's a ton of really awesome rewards, so if you're interested in that or you just want to support the channel, we have links to that and our PayPal down below. We have links to all of our social media, subscribe, like, do all of the youtube -y things that, you know, everybody pitches to you. We have all those links, we have all the social media stuff, so stay tuned for that. This almost looks like an apple and I love how cute all of these are. Oh my goodness, this one's probably my favorite. It's super cute. Uh, stay tuned for next week where we're going to be doing a cute little leaf hat for our Among Us little crewmate, as well as hopefully an egg, and I'm hopefully going to be getting out my Yeti slash Sasquatch tutorial sometime in the next week or two so stay tuned for all of that i've got tons of projects that i'm working on all the time feel free to message us on instagram or on email and until next time guys bye